Hello, this is Anthony, the WordPress guy, and I'm going to be stepping you through today the one-click install for a Rackspace cloud site. So I'm going to be stepping you through the, the process of adding the site in cloud sites uh, and, and actually going into WordPress and making some little changes that may help your development process. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start off in the admin panel of cloud sites. It's going to be manage.rackspacecloud.com. That's the URL. Uh, if you click on the left-hand side in the hosting tab, you're going to see a cloud sites option. You know, to select that. And once you get there, you're going to see a listing of all your sites. What you're going to want to do is click the Add a Site button. So in my case, I want to add in a uh, domain that no one has. So my awesome domain that no one has .com. Very long. I would not recommend it. Uh, go ahead and click the Add a Site button. Now you have two options. You can either register your domain for up to 10 years, or you can just set up the domain without registering it. And uh, in my case, that's what I'm going to do because I really don't want that really long domain name. So we'll go ahead and click next step. And you're going to be given two options, host as a standard website or alias domain. We're going to want to click host as a standard website and click next step. In the next screen, you're going to see your deployment options. So you either have Drupal, Joomla, or WordPress. Uh, in our case, we want WordPress, so we'll go ahead and click next step. And here's all the information that, that you need to input for the WordPress installation. So the site title, my awesome site title, and my admin username, I'm just going to put Anthony B. Um, and, and I recommend not using the word admin in your username. I strongly recommend that. Now your password, make sure it's a very strong password. And, and an email address, I'm just going to put a fake one. I will not be using the site. So database name, in this, in, in this section, it's going to be asking you for the database uh, instance information that you want to set up. So in the case of this one, it, I mean, it really doesn't matter what you put in here because what it's gonna do is it's gonna create a MySQL instance with whatever information you input here and WordPress is gonna use that to connect. So in my case, I'm just gonna put dbdb and the user dbdb and the password, uh, you make sure it's a very strong password because database infections are usually how it goes. And once you're done entering your password, you're going to see that the button for add a new site is now available. Go ahead and click add new site. And after that, you're going to have a, just a, a verification that everything looks in order. So if uh, in, in my case, the cost is zero dollars because I'm not registering anything. And in cloud sites, you've got unlimited domains for free. So uh, in in my case, it's free, but if you are registering your domain, you'll see the charges uh, that reflect whatever you selected. So when you do that, go ahead and click Finish. Once you click Finish, this is when the propagation process is going to start. It could take up to 15 minutes. Uh, give it 15 minutes and, and then uh, check back on this page. So you'll see it's going to automatically take you to the General Settings tab. And in the General Settings tab, it has this View Your Site. Now, if you see that the testing URL says Null in it, that means it's not yet propagated. So you're going to want to give it some time. Uh, when in the 15 minutes is up, just click the refresh button and, uh, and you'll see that the information has changed. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this video and we'll come back in 15 minutes. All right, so once your site is propagated, you're going to refresh the page and you're going to see that the testing link now looks a little different. Uh, what you're going to want to do is click on that testing link and I'm opening mine in a new tab and you're going to see that WordPress is now installed. My awesome site title, all of that information that we input on the, the one click install is now put onto the installation. So what we're going to want to do to log in is you're going to do forward slash WP dash admin. And once you get there, you're going to see the, the normal login screen. I'm going to go ahead and type in the username that I defined in the one click install and my password that I defined there. And you're going to see it logs you into the normal WordPress dashboard. And what I highly recommend is that you go to the plugins panel first and foremost and deactivate SuperCache. What that may do is if you're developing on the live site, it may interfere by creating cached versions of your file. So if you make changes to a page and you view that page, it's pulling the cached version so it's not reflecting the new changes. So I highly advise that you deactivate that and also log in through FTP. And, and what you're going to want to do is... Uh, is log in through FTP, you're going to see all of your sites and go ahead and click on the site that you're working on right now, click on the web folder, go into the content folder, and you're going to see these are all of the basic, uh, the, the standard WordPress documents. We're going to go in the WP-content folder and you're going to see a folder called cache. This is what's generated by SuperCache and this is what you need to delete so that it stops interfering with your changes. So just delete that folder and it will cause no harm to your site. And 
that folder is already deleted. It's just picking up a cache version on my browser, but you'll see it's now deleted. Um, and and something that I, I highly advise is to not delete Supercache. Supercache is really great in our environment, and if you use best practices like uh, progressive JPEGs and uh, and asynchronous scripts and things like that, you can get a, a one-second website easy. So uh, it, it, I highly advise you keep it on there. You can use W3 Total Cache if you want to, but there's a very specific configuration that you may need to use. So once you've done all of this, though, you're ready to start building in WordPress, and your one-click install is completed. So that's the one-click install in a nutshell. If you have any questions on that, please feel free to leave a comment below. Um, and, and yeah, so uh, be sure to subscribe to this channel. Uh, we'll be posting more tutorials on, on how to do things in cloud sites. And, uh, and we also have a, a, a weekly WordPress quick tip. So if you're building in WordPress and you want some quick tips and some things that I'm finding as I'm building in WordPress, uh, then, then you could follow that as well. So yeah, with that, later.